Hello, this is Kevin Jones of the Lord's Prayer Network and Ministry of RIN. Today I want to do a very condensed um, version of the Lord's Prayer template. Now I've done this many times, but I wanted to do I wanted to do it in one video because I'm encouraging everybody to pray. A lot of people say, well, you know, Brother Kevin, I don't really know how to pray. I don't really know what I should be doing. So anyway, I'm going to take this video. It'll be a little longer than normal because I want to go through all the stations. Some of you know on the LPN site, I actually have stations where you can actually pray through them and it's as assist. But to get, give you an example of how I would do it, okay, now I'm going to stay to the Lord's Prayer uh, standard or template just as an assist to you. But I would like to challenge you with making the Lord's Prayer part of your template. If you don't have a particular way that you pray or know how to pray then I want to suggest that you take this template that I'm sharing with you now a lot of us were raised if you were raised in a traditional church like I was you recited it but we very seldom did it but now I want to teach you and encourage you to do it well let's go ahead and get into it the first part of the Lord's Prayer begins with worship the second part of the Lord's Prayer is praying the kingdom, or what I call kingdom business. The third, the third part is your provision. The fourth part is relationships, namely forgiveness. And then the fifth part is discernment. And the sixth part, or well, discernment and protection. And then the sixth part is uh, committal. And the seventh part is a closing prayer, what I call pray, praise and worship and the amen. Now, let's take that model and let's go ahead and do it. How would it look like? How would it sound like? Well, this is how it would go. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I enter your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. I'm thankful unto you, Lord God, and I bless your name. I thank you, Lord God, for waking me up this morning and giving me a brand new day. But I mostly thank you, Lord God, for revealing your son to me, sharing his love in my heart and writing my book in the, in the Lamb's book of life. Lord, I'm so glad that you put my name there. I'm so glad, Lord God, that you gave me the fullness of your spirit. Oh God, you redeemed me so I could worship you and stand in your presence worshiping you, Lord God, as the holy God, as the only God. Lord, may you be high and lifted up. May your name be praised. Lord, be magnified. Let Jesus Christ be glorified. You said, Lord, if I am lifted up, I will draw all men unto God. So Lord, let Jesus Christ bring glory to the Father through my prayer right now, Lord, for I am seeking your face. Lord, when you said, Lord God, seek my face, that's when my heart said, O oh Lord, thy face will I seek. I give you the praise, Lord God, body, soul, and spirit. I uplift the name of Jesus and give you the praise, Holy Father, because you said that you accept me for Jesus' sake. So I'm going to praise you, God. I'm going to lift up my hands and praise you. I'm going to bless you, Lord, with my soul, all that's within me. I'm going to bless your holy name, for Jesus Christ is Lord, and you have made God. God our Father, Lord, I praise you. Let God be magnified. Hallelujah. Now, Lord, establish your kingdom. Father, use me to establish your kingdom. Father, take all the circumstances around me and magnify the kingdom of God. Take my wife, take my family, take my children and establish the kingdom of God. Take the work you've called me to do. O oh Lord Jesus, and establish your kingdom. O oh Father, bless my pastor. O oh Lord God, the man, the woman of God you've called, Lord God, to lead us, O oh Lord God, in righteousness in the kingdom. Bless my pastor, Lord God. Give him the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. Let the eyes of his heart, Lord, be enlightened so that he can know, Lord God, the hope of this great vision that we've all been called to. Father, I pray, Lord God, for our missionaries, Lord God, the ones that you've sent out both locally and abroad. Fill them with the Holy Ghost and mighty gifts of the Spirit to establish the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And Father, we pray that our government, Lord God, that you'd have mercy on our government and that, Lord Jesus, you would bring our government back 
to God and bring the knowledge of Jesus Christ back to our nation. Oh God, I ask that Jesus would be established, Lord God, everywhere in every heart. That churches would explode with the revival fire and revival power. Oh God, I ask you to use my life, use my comrades, use my brothers, use my sisters. Lord God, hear the prayers of your people because you're coming back again, Lord God. And we pray that we be ready, that we will be ready against that day. Lord, provide for me in your kingdom. Lord, I'm your servant. Lord God, I'm your child. Father, give me this very day everything I need to do your will. Everything I need, Lord God, to do it. Lord, pay my bills, Lord Jesus, because I represent you. Take care of all of my needs, Lord, according to your economy and glory. This economy, Lord, might be slowed down because of, a, because of the, uh, the, the crisis, Lord God, but your economy is not affected. So according to your economy, Lord, pour out your riches and glory. Not so that I can have abundance, Lord God, to enjoy, but so that I can enjoy it, sharing it with others, Lord. Make my provision somebody's blessing. Make my abundance, Lord God, somebody's prayer received, Lord God, somebody's prayer answered. God, take my provision, Lord, and establish your kingdom, Lord God. Let me not be ashamed, Lord, because I put my trust in you. Meet all of my needs, Lord, for your glory. Because every time you do, and every time, Lord God, you answer my cry, it glorifies you. Now, Lord, I ask you, God, to forgive me of my sins. You know, Lord God, the things I'm prone to. You know, Lord God, that I'm impulsive by nature. And I can sin very quickly, Lord God, with my mouth. My feelings can become hurt. Oh, Lord God, will you protect me? And forgive me, Lord Jesus, for ugly words I have spoken, Lord Jesus, against my wife and my children, Lord God, and members of my church and even my co-workers. I ask you to forgive me, Lord God, because I can do bad things, wicked things sometimes with my mouth. And so I ask you, Lord Jesus, though you're teaching me, I still ask you, Lord God, to forgive me. Forgive my sins, Lord God, down to the very thoughts and the intents of my heart. Let your blood, Lord Jesus, cleanse me from all unrighteousness, Lord God. You gave me the word, Lord God, so that I would not sin against you. But if I do sin, Lord God, be my advocate and wash me in the blood as I, Lord, take a disposition to forgive all those who offend me and hurt me. Oh God, I'm not going to hold a grudge. I refuse to. Because if you ever held a grudge against me, Lord, I'd be dead. So Father, in the name of Jesus, forgive my sins. And Lord, protect my relations, relationships. I want to walk with the family of God. Lord, I want to walk with my enemy right. I want to walk right with the person who's doing it to me, Lord God. For that means, Lord God, I will be imitating your ways. And Lord, I pray, Lord God, that you would not lead me into temptation that you would not lord jesus lead me into ugly things that would destroy me that satan would love to kill me over now father i have to ask you not to lead me because sometimes i'm tempted to think that you're calling me to do something that is not you at all and i'll be swearing that it's god's will that it's your plan lord but it isn't it's just my flesh or somebody's opinion and I'm doing it. Oh God, protect me. Don't lead me into temptation. Anything, Lord God, that is not you, expose it. So I won't call it you and be led down the wrong path. Protect me from the devil's schemes, Lord Jesus. From the evil one's tricks, Lord God. From making soulish and fleshly things sound spiritual when they're not. And Lord God, make me a servant, Lord Jesus, so I can easily be entreated by you or by other men and women that you put in my pathway to try to tell me the truth. Let my heart be humble before you so I can hear you, Lord God, because your word says to him will I look. He that's of a broken and contrite spirit I will not despise. So I receive your protection, Lord God, and I believe that your spirit is leading me, Lord God, in the path of righteousness for your namesake. So Lord, this is all about you. It's always been all about you. And I want to give everything, Lord God, back to you. You gave me life. It's your life, Lord God. You redeemed me. You gave me intelligence. Lord Jesus, let it be renewed as I give it back to you.
Father, you give me a heart and a conscience, let it be purified. I give it back to you. Father, you gave me a career. God, I give it back to you. God, you gave me a ministry. Lord, it's your ministry. Father, you gave me a wife. Lord God, I bless her in Jesus' name. She's your crown unto me. God, you gave me offspring. Father, I give them back to you. Oh, Lord Jesus, you gave me a church, Lord Jesus. I praise you for them, Lord, but I give them back to you. I dedicate, Lord God, my church for your purpose. Because, Lord God, you deserve the praise. You deserve the glory. It's all about Jesus. It's all about God. It's all about you, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, that you're speaking to your people. You're, you're, you're speaking to our hearts. You're revealing the word to us. You're, you're sharing your voice with us, Lord God. You're touching our heart. You're even giving us repentance for things that we have not, Lord Jesus, turned from for years. You're blessing us, Lord. I want to praise you and thank you and give you all the glory because Jesus Christ is my best friend, but he's also my God, my Savior, the one I bow down to. Lord, be glorified, be magnified. Jesus, you are Lord. There is no other God beside you. Amen. Now, what I did, I just went through all the seven stations that fast. That took about nine minutes to do. So you'd be surprised that prayer is not hard. But if you have a template and you know what should be contained in it. So let's go over it as we close. The first part of prayer is not prayer at all. It's a declaration of praise. It's praise usually in three ways. Thanksgiving and praise. Praise is just giving glory and honor and acknowledging God and lifting him up for who he is. Thanksgiving is just doing the same thing for what he's done. But worship is different from the other two in that it's responsive. That's when the presence of God comes upon you and you can feel him and have your praises. And then he begins to give you utterance in the spirit. Maybe in praise, it may be a word. That takes you into praying the kingdom. Praying the kingdom is what it's all about. The spirit of wisdom and revelation in the heart of every man. Everybody finding Jesus. Everybody coming into the fullness of the knowledge of Jesus Christ. You pray into that. Then third, your provision. Once you understand that the first two, what it's all about, your provision is part of that. So that keeps you from this, you know, prosperity excess thing that's been going around. And I love my prosperity brothers, but then there have been always those that have taken so, such extremes. But your provision is part of the kingdom. And if you look at the Genesis account, he made abundance. It's just already worked into the system. That's the way it is. You can't change it. Then next, you take a look at forgiveness. This is relationships. You always pray about your relationships because that's what God gave you. E even your enemies. Your enemies are part of what God has given you to perfect his person in you. And so you pray for forgiveness and you bless other people. You forgive them as you're asking God to forgive you. You have tendencies in your life that you're vulnerable to, to hurt people or, the, or to offend God. Ask God to forgive you and then take that disposition that you will do the same. And then, of course, there is asking God to keep you from temptation. And the reason why it says lead us not is because we can do things that we think are God, but they're not. That is why Jesus says that. There are things that we swear up and down God spoke to us or showed us to do it, but it wasn't him at all. And it has the footprint of the flesh in there. It magnifies the flesh and the world and the devil, but it sounded all spiritual. You have to ask God to lead you not into temptation because we don't always know until God proves it. What's it. That's why we need to know our Bible. And then you ask the Lord to protect you from the traps of the enemy because of those temptations, because Satan tries to set you up. Like he did Adam and Eve in the garden, hath God said, trying to pull you away from the word of God and pull you into his deal. And so you ask God to protect you. You ask the blood of Jesus to be applied to your heart and cleanse your conscience. Your conscience has to be purified. Your mind has to be renewed. Remember that. And then there's the prayer of committal. You give everything back to God. It's all about him, your wife, your job, your career, your children, your ministry, your church, your everything, your vacation, your stocks, your bonds, your retirement, everything, your breath, everything. You give it back to God. He's the one. He's what it's all about. And then you close with praise and worship, giving all glory and honor to Jesus. Well, I sure hope that was a blessing to you. Please write Sultan and I and let us know 
uh, how these videos will bless you because I want everybody to be encouraged to pray during this crisis. Right now, children of God, we need to pray. Jesus is still the answer even in the midst of this crisis. God bless you and I will see you in videos to come. Bye-bye.